Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to show you another fabric imitation. I found this bright African pattern on the internet and thought it would look awesome in clay. We will need the following tools. A pasta machine and a roller, blades, a texture sheet with a zebra pattern, sponge for texture, a needle tool, cutters for the earrings and cling wrap. I mixed some of the colors going by the picture on my computer. It is slightly different in color from my phone. All my base colors are Primo Clay. The pink is a mix of one part blush, one part fluorescent pink, plus half of one part of Ecru. Yellow is one part cadmium yellow and half a part of sunshine. The greenish teal color is a mix of almost two parts cobalt blue and one part cadmium yellow half part of acro. Blue is a mix of one part cobalt and half part white. Orange and black are not mixed. The key to this technique is using clay that is not soft. Primo is usually really soft, so after I mixed my colors, I put them in the freezer for 5 minutes. Roll the colors on the thickest setting of your pasta machine. You want those crumbling edges, so leave them. We'll cut off little portions of those edges and chop them up even smaller. After you are done chopping the clay into small pieces, take your main colors and rip off pieces by hand. Again, you want those uneven crumbly edges. Put the colors together. As you can see, I put the pieces next to each other, on top of each other, there is no real rule that you need to follow on this. I want the size of the color base to match my texture sheet, so periodically I put the sheet next to my color base to make sure it fits. Once you're done with your base, start arranging those chopped up pieces. Looking at the original pattern, it seems like colors crash into each other and little fractured pieces splash all over the opposite colors. So if you have pink neighbor in the teal, you would put little pieces of pink on the teal near the joint and then little pieces of teal on the pink. With your blade, fracture the little pieces even more, drag them, cut them, spread them all over. Don't worry about marking up the base, we will burnish it later and you won't even see the marks.
Once you fill up the whole base, take a piece of paper and carefully burnish it until the surface is smooth. Set the base aside for now, let's prepare our zebra stripes. Here I'm using a satin slice technique. And unlike the colors for the base, we want the clay for the stripes to be nice and soft. Take small pieces of black clay and fill up the texture sheet. Press into the sheet to make sure the clay stays in the crevices. Then carefully cut off the excess part with a blade. Clean the blade often, or it won't cut things off, but drag the clay over the texture and most likely take all the clay out of the dips and crevices. Be careful with your blade as well, some texture sheets could be easy to cut through. I don't apply too much pressure, just light surface scratches to remove small bits of clay.
you finished filling in the texture sheet, take your base and put it on the texture sheet face down. Press the clay in through a piece of paper so there is less of a chance of the clay sticking to your fingers and pulling it out of the texture sheet. If you won't be adding another layer in the back, then you can apply some texture now. I am just using a sponge. I'm not speeding up through this process so you can see how carefully and gently I'm doing it. Once the back is done, turn the slab over and very gently press onto the glass. Carefully separate the clay and the texture sheet and then slowly start removing the texture sheet by bending it backwards. And here we go, here's our slab ready to be cut. If you have some clay left over in the texture sheet, you can easily remove it by pressing soft clay into it. For rounded edges, use clean wrap to cut out your shapes. Since I had colored clay left over, I decided to make another slab, but this time I'm using a needle tool to fracture and spread bits of clay. 
I'm not sure if it was any easier than using the blade, but maybe it will be for someone else. So check out this process, it does produce the same results. And this is a short little bonus to show you how I use the colored scraps. I will be using them later for some earrings. Here are the earrings I made using the slabs. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching, till next time!